Ala Alatoa. Yeah. Uh, he's a tight head. He certainly is. A 29 year old tight head. But Leinster have had an oversupply of world class tight heads, unless I, they need three. I don't, I don't know about the. I honestly don't know about the about whether they have an oversupply of world class tight heads. Because, yes, they have Tyke Furling, they have Andrew Porter, both of those I would consider to be world class. Michael Alalatoa is also up there as well, a brilliant, brilliant prop and has been part of a a seriously impressive Crusaders pack over the last few years who are a brilliantly well-organised team. They always have an excellent scrum. It's throwing up a few interesting things. I, I still don't really know what is going to happen here. There's a lot of people suggesting that this move is likely to lead to Andrew Porter switching back across to Loosehead. Personally, I think keep Andrew Porter at tight head, keep Tyke Furlong at tight head. I think you're still going to get 15 games at least next season out of Al Alatoa. Now, a lot of people would suggest if you have Andrew Porter and Tyke Furlong, you're spending tight heads don't come cheap you're spending what is probably good money on someone like that and is he going to be a, you know and a, a, is he going to be a reserve for big Heineken Champions Cup games I I just don't I don't want to see Andrew Porter switch back to Loosehead because th- there's a number of reasons for it I think the future is a little more clear in terms of Looseheads coming through with Ireland personally <laughs> like it's funny it's a funny one I, I'm starting to think Andrew Porter might actually be pushed over b- back back over to Lucid. I don't necessarily want it because I think the there aren't as many clear cut options coming through a tight head and realistically you need a top quality tight head from an Irish point of view anyway well, yeah, what you, for well, 80 well, minutes I, I, I tend to agree with you and certainly if I'm um, in his camp if you look at that map that keeps um, getting produced of the positions on the field that get the highest pay the lowest pay tends to be the loose head and one of the highest paid is always the, the tight head like it's a massive drop in his earning potential for the next 10 years so yeah. I really hope they're paying him tight head money to go That's, to loose head if yeah. he's going and if they're not then I'm like sorry lads no I ain't doing it but there's a benefit in having three world class tight heads in that you could manage all their game time perfectly over the course of the season you can absolutely and look, just look at this season when Tyg Furlong was out for so long the, like the options weren't really there. Andrew Porter had to play a hell of a amount of rugby. And I think if you look further down further down the, the depth chart, Tom O'Toole looks a very promising player, but we haven't seen too much of him in a, we haven't seen any of him in an Irish shirt as well. And I just think there are there are more potential options at Loosehead coming through. And I think if you were to if you were to put Andrew Porter across, there's an element of robbing Peter to to pay Paul. I know Rory O'Connor has suggested to me in the past that isn't that exactly what they did initially with Andrew Porter, and it probably is. But also, he's 25 years old. His peak years as tight head are still definitely ahead of him. And if you have Tyg Furlong and Andrew Porter as the tight heads for Ireland, realistically, you are looking, barring disastrous injuries, you're looking pretty safe at tight head prop for the next, guts of the next 10 years with Ireland. Two World Cup cycles, thanks very much, absolutely. One and last point, though, which is a little bit a little bit tricky. It might come to nothing. Tyg Furlong still hasn't signed his new contract yet. Okay. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> Tyg Furlong's worth a lot of money. I would, I would There's no team in the world that wouldn't be able to turn him into a massive marketing sensation like one yeah. of the French teams any of the English teams I would, I would hope to God he's going to be staying in Ireland I would at a guess I would be saying what might be holding it up is that there's a fair, there's a fair chance if he does sign a new contract he'd probably be the, the highest paid player in Ireland would be my guess Tight, head, tight heads always have a premium and you saw since he came back from injury uh, in the Six Nations just how good he is he hasn't lost a, he hasn't lost a beat 